yesterday, myself and Gio did a video on Patreon, a mug of tea. And just like the cup of tea, we ask for questions and then we deal with, with the questions. And basically, the, the viewers the viewers make the show. They make the subject matter. One of the questions that came in, and you'll have to excuse me if I don't remember it word for word, but it was, do West Ham get a bad rap from the press? Are West Ham targeted by the press and get meaner reporting than is given to other clubs? Uh, the Zuma. The Zuma situation was given as an example. Did, did the press go in harder on West Ham than that? Than, than anybody else? I think that particular example is really, really hard to say. Because there's no direct comparison. Uh, number one, he filmed himself or his brother filmed him. It was, it was put out there. And until you... Oh, let's hope we don't see that. Until you were to see... Uh, <laughs> I'm not suggesting anyone would do such a thing. An Aston Villa player abusing an animal it being filmed and then put out there, you've no idea whether West Ham got a disproportionate amount of media rage compared to anybody else. It was a weird thing. I've never seen an example like it. So I think it's really, really hard to compare it. Uh, but what I did say was I didn't feel that West Ham were were overly targeted. I listened to Talk Sport quite a lot, and particularly on the Adrian Durham show, I, I always, I'm always aware that that fans will ring up and say, Oi, Oi, Durham, you don't like Chelsea, you're always giving us a bad time. Oi, Durham, you don't like Tottenham, you're always giving us a bad time. Oi, Durham, what you got against Arsenal? I think it's easy to feel that your your club is being victimised. I didn't feel that West Ham were any more than anyone else. And I gave the example of Tottenham. As I felt at the start of the season, uh, the press were like a, a dog with a bone in terms of Harry Kane's refusal to sign a new contract. He was having a bit of a soul cup, wasn't he? Let's, let's be perfectly... <laughs> honest with each other, he wasn't playing, certainly wasn't playing like he is now. I think he was a little bit stroppy because he didn't get the transfer he wanted, he did the interview with Gary Neville, the press were all over it, I thought Tottenham were getting a really, really hard time. Then, sort of added to the fact that they brought in Nuno, it didn't work out, they, they were crap, and uh, and the, I felt the press were after him. I also feel that that was the case with Man United as well when Ole was was in charge. So I just think I think the press are like a predator, and I think if they see a wounded animal, they'll they'll <laughs> bad analogy given the uh, anyway. Um, I, I think if they 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 see they, they'll go for it, you know. Um, and it, I looked at Tottenham. I looked what happened to fallout with Antonio Conte last night. Now, I I've, I've been watching a little bit more football recently, if I'm if I'm honest, and. I watched Tottenham against Man City. I was very impressed. I think I may even said it um, on on, uh, on Hammer's chat as well. Very impressed by what I saw. I thought they had a, a top-level manager there in Conte. But I'm going to do something quite weird now, and that's sort of stick up for uh, Daniel Levy a little bit. Because I'm just seeing him being cast as the villain and the bad guy here. And they have lost... I think if they lost four out of their last five Tottenham... Sorry, I laugh. I shouldn't laugh. But I'm seeing it's all... I don't know how he's managed to do it, this manager. And he and they were really good against City. But somehow, those losses are all Daniel Levy's fault. And I don't like Levy. I, I really don't. I think he's one of the most unlikable characters in football. I really do. But I looked at him and thought, hold on, mate. This Conte, he is an emotional character. He really is. He was... I watched an interview with him the other day. Went after they beat City, oh, he was top of the world. I mean, it's just extremes, isn't he? He was absolutely top of the world. He was talking about how he's going to improve Harry Kane and make him even better and how brilliant Harry Kane is and how well they played and about how the squad was. Whilst it might be a little bit smaller, it was more what he wanted. And when I watched them play, I watched that... Um, was it Bentacor? Was that his name? I think the number 30. He was really good. Romero looked really good as well. And obviously Son and Harry Kane have this this really good understanding. And you know what? It was it was there was some good football. They I felt it the way they lost against Burnley, it was sort of his fault. I thought it was Conte's fault. I thought he got it wrong. I praised him for being really sharp tactically against Man City. Um and I I and I just thought he didn't I don't know who the guy's name is, Royale, I think that was his name. He looked all right. From what I could see, I don't know any more about Tottenham than, than any other club. I, you know, I watch West Ham. That's really, that's really it. But particularly in the second half, I thought, OK, well, he was he was part of their threat. And he took him off, right? Now, look, we, we all know this. We, we've all got our own frustrations with David Moyes and the way he does substitutions. I thought he got it wrong. 
I think Daniel Levy had supplied him with uh, with the players that he wanted. Got rid of the bad eggs that he didn't want. He's so, you can just imagine Daniel Levy got rid of um, Deli Ali with gritted teeth, really, um, because you know realistically, he'd probably let him go for a lot less money. He's not even paying any money until next season or, or whatever, and that's only if he plays a certain amount of games. But he backed his manager. He also got three players in. I think it was a, you know, a couple from Italy, certainly, and players he's worked with before as well. Gave him what he wanted. That's a good squad. I'm telling you now, that is a really, really good squad. I looked at some of their players, I think it's, it's outstanding. And even though he took, I think he took Royale off, I've got, I've, I've, I might have that wrong. He I, I, I took off the old, the old Royale with cheese, and and he brought Amora, who is a sensational player. And they lost the game. And I tell you why they lost. They lost the game because he got it tactically wrong, and they couldn't handle the weather conditions. And it, it's as simple as that. But there he was, and this massive swing. He's he's a, he's an emotional lunatic. I'm sorry, um, and I think he is brilliant. But oh my God, talk about tantrum. Talk about toys out the pram. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to revisit things. Oh, he has gone from absolute elation to absolute despair in a matter of, well, well I guess in a matter of 90 minutes, really. And it just you look at the, the pre-match press conferences, well, the ones that they sort of do a couple of days before the game, it's all about what he's going to achieve and what he's going to do. And then the one after, it's basically, I'm off. I've had enough. He didn't quite say that. But there needs to be... I, I just found, I just, anyway, it wasn't, it was really the fact of all the press, and it's really to go on to what I said at the start. It's just how the press all bought into this. They were straight on, they're so anti Tottenham, the press, that they all bought into this thing that, that Daniel Levy's the bad guy and this wonderful uh, coach can do no wrong. He's lost four games in five. If, if I've got that right, I think that's it. Anyway, I could probably check on, on a computer. But um, I thought, well, you know, there is a press agenda. There is a press agenda. I, I I couldn't I couldn't believe it. You know, I thought, mate, just take some responsibility. And I look at it now and I look at the way the Tottenham fans are reacting. They're reacting. I actually heard some people on the radio last night turn around and say, um and turn around and, and say he's the best manager we've we've had in the Premier League. Like, what he's been there five minutes, not done anything. Pochettino to the Champions League final. It is a weird one. It it really is a weird how, how emotional um people get the um the the presenter the presenter on talk sport jamie o'hara jamie o'hara <laughs> this was fantastic i shouldn't be reveling in it but i just thought hold on a second jamie o'hara i promise you you go and listen to the show pretty much after the match it was jason cundy and jamie o'hara and o'hara said that's it if conte walks i'm not watching a i'm not watching a tottenham match again what what? What now? He's someone that played for Tottenham. He's a, he's a Tottenham fan. He doesn't hide the fact he's a Tottenham fan. You know, good. I don't. I don't want radio presenters, TV presenters to hide who they support. Far from it. But I thought, oh my goodness, mate, get a grip, will ya? Just get a grip on that one. Look, basically, he he can't. He's paid by Talk Sport to report on games. He can't turn around and say, I'm not watching them. I'm not watching any Tottenham games. Oh, you will, and you have to. It, it's your it's your job. If you're going to take Talk Sport's money. You're going to have to watch the games. You're going to have to talk about it's Tottenham. You're going to have to watch the games. That's just what you're going to have to do. Otherwise, you basically can't do do the job. You're, otherwise, you're sort of a bus driver refusing to... I'm not driving that route and I'm not driving that bus. You can't really do it, mate. It's as simple as that, really. So, I don't know why I always compare everyone to bus drivers. Um, but anyway, I just thought it was really, really weird, this, this guy yesterday. And then now everyone's... He's been there five minutes. He's done nothing. I think he's a good manager. Don't get me wrong. I'd... I'd you know, I'd have him at West Ham, I, I, a manager of that calibre, certainly. Um, but my word. And and I just, I thought it was really interesting to look at the topsy-turvy nature. I just think in terms of West Ham, it's so easy with your own club to think you've got it the worst in the world. Um, and I think, uh, uh, certainly at the moment, it feels like that's the case at West Ham. But I sort of looked at if I actually know. But Man United felt like that to a certain extent very, very recently. And the presser on them with... Maguire and Ronaldo and all the rest of it and their, their manager looks okay but nothing special so he'll get replaced as well won't he um, Southampton a flavour of the month at the moment aren't they but it wasn't that were they, did they lose 7 or 9 nil or something I, I, I think they did relatively recently um, it seems not that long ago and, and everyone was saying he's got that Ranić. he's got to be out he should go out and now people are saying he should be the next Man United manager I just think it's a, it's a funny old thing football is swings and roundabouts swings and roundabouts it really really is and maybe just maybe 
you know, Tottenham aren't as bad. I sort of said this about West Ham the other day. Maybe Tottenham aren't as bad as the press were making out. Um, but maybe Tottenham aren't quite as good as everybody expects them to be. Maybe they are just that team. Maybe the season they had in the Champions League under Harry Redknapp, whatever it was, when Gareth Bale was would look like the, the fastest player you'd ever seen in your life. And maybe that season and the Pochettino season were an exception. Maybe that was the exception. Maybe Tottenham being one of the top two or three teams in the Premier League was the exception. Maybe, just maybe, and whether they find themselves in sixth or seventh, maybe they are. Maybe they're a top six or seven team. Um, and, and maybe, just maybe, Antonio Conte actually bought into the hype that Tottenham could be Man City or Chelsea or something like that, and he's got there and he's actually thought, oh, OK, Um we're actually a top six, top seven team. The fact that he's thrown his toys out of the pram, oh my word, honestly. But nothing would surprise me. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, they, if Tottenham win their next game and he starts and, and everything's happy again. Weird. It's a funny old game.